everybody! Today I wanted to talk to you about reading and specifically helping your child to enjoy reading. Or maybe this, this video could help you to enjoy reading if you don't like it. I am passionate about reading and I think everybody should do it and everybody should enjoy it. So hopefully some of these tips will be helpful. Reading is so much more important than just being able to function in the world and read contracts and package labels and road signs. It can actually cause changes in your brain and in your personality. Some of the benefits include it can halt the progression or even prevent Alzheimer's and dementia. You can lower blood pressure by relaxing and reading. It can be a real source of tranquility in your life. It can help you to sleep better. It improves your memory and helps to forge new pathways in your brain. It can add to your store of knowledge and vocabulary, like who doesn't want to sound more intelligent and articulate. It improves your focus and concentration. It can improve your writing skills. Reading improves your social perception and emotional intelligence. Reading actually makes you more empathic and it's a screen-free entertainment that you can take anywhere you go. So some of the ways to help your child to enjoy reading is to just surround them by books and reading from when they're little. If they see it all the time, then that's going to be normal to them. That's going to be an acceptable and normal way of relaxing and looking up knowledge and entertaining themselves. They'll be much more likely to be interested in reading than if they just suddenly presented with reading at school age. When they're babies, obviously they can't read, but you can read to them, you can show them pictures in books, you can get library books for babies as well as for reading age children. Read to your child. You can do this from when they're tiny. They may not understand the story that you're reading if they're just babies or toddlers, but they can form positive associations with reading by feeling that closeness and comfort and attention that you're giving them and that will be a positive association that they have with reading going forward. Keep reading to your kids until they don't want you to read to them anymore. I still sometimes read to Noah, he loves it and we love having that time together. Daniel at age 14 obviously doesn't want me to read to him anymore. Have your child read to you as well and by this I don't mean the boring standard reading homework that they have to do every single day. Have them read the next step of a recipe or what's next on the shopping list or things like that when you're out and about. As kids begin to read, they can find it really rewarding to be asked to read the, you know, the street signs or any road signs as you're going along and like sound out the words. This could be difficult if the area you live in has really long complicated names though. Also, allow your children to see you reading. This one's a little bit more tricky because you might only find time to read when they're at school or when they're in bed and things are kind of calm and peaceful. But it's important for them to see you reading and part of the reason is they learn reading etiquette. They learn to, to wait patiently for you to finish your paragraph and look up before speaking to somebody who's reading, for example. You can also let them hear you talking about books with your spouse or your friends and for them to see that this is a normal entertainment thing. I mean we all talk about the TV programs we watch or things like that and for them to hear you discussing books um, creates a, that association that this is something fun and enjoyable to do. You can also let them enjoy audiobooks. I was wondering if audiobooks were interchangeable with like actually physically reading books and if they have the same benefits and they really do. I will link an article below which explains how and why but audiobooks are great. You can listen to them in the car, you can discuss the story together with them, and again, it's screen-free entertainment. It's not the same as them sitting down with a book and doing the work of reading, but there are places where it's necessary, and I'll get to that in a little bit. I get my audiobooks from my library through an app called Overdrive. There are different platforms where you can get audiobooks. Obviously, you can buy them. If you still have a CD player, I don't think I even have one anymore, I've only got one in the car, you can get uh, books on CD from the library as well. And there's a website called storynori.com, I'll link it below, and that is a fun website where um, the narrator reads stories and that's for younger children. And it's a free website. So what if your children are older? I believe it's never too late. I only started exercising regularly in my late 30s, but I've already seen that that has had an effect on my children, that they see that I prioritize that, that it's an important part of my life, that I make an effort to do that, talk about the benefits, they see the benefits of that. So 
I believe that no matter how late you start, it can still have an impact on your kids. If they see you reading, if they are provided with more reading material, if you make trips to the library more frequent, it will still have an effect on them, even if you didn't read to them in utero. Okay, if your kids don't enjoy reading, try and get to the root of the problem because it might be something quite simple that you can fix. For example, if they don't enjoy reading at bedtime, it may be because they don't have a bedside lamp and they find the glare of the overhead light annoying hurts their eyes, get them a lamp. It could be a simple fix like that. Maybe they've always been given books that just don't catch their interest and they find reading boring. There are so many genres and types of books there really is something for everybody. Um, just trying lots of different things might help you find the key to their reading interest. It may be that they are interested in a particular sport and you can get them books around that or try graphic novels or magazines. It's all still reading. Daniel doesn't enjoy fantasy books. Well, he enjoys... He doesn't enjoy fantasy books if it's a fantasy world. If it's kind of like set in the normal world but it's zombies, like he can handle that. Whereas Noah loves fantasy books. And the only way we found that out was to just try loads of different genres. Maybe one of the things getting in the way of your child enjoying reading is that they find that they don't have the time to read. So is there enough downtime between activities and outside of just free playtime for them to actually sit down and get immersed in a book? It's really worth creating that space. Maybe their reading age differs from their actual age. If your child's reading age is younger, they might be really bored by the infantile stories that they're able to read. This is where audiobooks are really helpful, if, especially if you have a read-along book that goes with the audiobook. So they can be helped along as they read the more advanced book and hear the story as well and it pulls them into the story. If your child's reading age is older than them, which is the case of my kids, Noah is um, at age nine, he was testing at a 12 and a half year old reading age, you might find the opposite problem, that the books that they are able to read, the storylines may be not appropriate or a bit more advanced for them. So you may have to spend a little bit more time researching suitable books and I'll go into that a bit later when I talk about choosing reading material. Getting to the root of the problem, maybe the root is that your child just hates picking books. Daniel is like that. He loves reading, but he absolutely hates going and picking books. So I've taken on that task and I keep him supplied with reading material and we're both happy. Even though he reads a lot, he always has something to read. And I also know what he's reading, which helps. Maybe a child just doesn't have a comfortable place to read. If they share a bedroom, maybe they never feel that they have the peace and quiet to actually sit and get immersed in a book. Try and create a space or allow them, you know, time in your bedroom to go and read a book if that's what they need. Maybe the problem is that your child feels the pressure to finish every single book that they start. Maybe they just don't realize that you don't have to finish every book that you start. Now, Daniel can be a bit impatient and give up on books too soon, so I require him to read at least two to three chapters, two chapters if they're long, or three chapters if they're shorter, before deciding he doesn't like a book, because sometimes it takes that long to establish who's who and what's what and actually get into the story. But if he doesn't like a book after that, he's welcome to just stop reading, because I don't want them to feel like they have to finish every single book they start. Life is too short and there are way too many good books out there to waste time reading one that you're just not enjoying. So maybe make sure that your child understands they don't actually have to finish every book they start, and then maybe they'll be more willing to try a whole range of different genres and find the books that they do enjoy. Maybe you've gone through all of these things and you've tried to get to the root of the problem and the problem is your child just doesn't enjoy reading. We'll get to that later. Noah was like that and now he loves reading. So hopefully some of the tips I can share will help you. But first I want to talk about how to choose books. Now walking into a bookstore or library can be overwhelming and you think, where do I even start to choose a book? So sometimes narrowing down the range that your child has to choose from can take a bit of that overwhelm away and give them some direction on how to choose books. So you could say to them, right, um, choose, choose books that only have blue covers or choose books that either the title or the author starts with the letter A 
or only choose books that have the in the title and that just narrows the range of books that they're selecting from it makes a bit of a game of it and maybe helps them to feel less overwhelmed going in and looking at all these books staring at them and wondering which one do I pick where do I even start you could even give them like a little scavenger hunt and say choose three books that are from the bottom shelf choose two books that have uh, a plant on the cover or something like that it's also difficult to choose, I find it difficult to choose books at the library if I feel rushed. So if you kind of nipping into the library for 10 minutes after school and before the next activity, your child may just feel too frazzled to actually choose a book and they may just be whining, I don't know what to read. If you allow enough time, they can really take the time and explore what books are there, maybe even sit down and start reading some to see if it grabs their attention and they want to take it out. Um, just give them loads of time to have a wander, have a play and explore in the library. Luckily, the library is one place that it's not a hardship to wait for somebody. So grab yourself a book or a magazine and put your feet up and enjoy the downtime while your child explores the books. Don't be afraid to ask other people. Ask the librarian what kind of books are popular for your child's age. Ask friends if they can recommend any books. Ask online. There are forums online where people may have this discussion as well of, you know, which books are suitable for an 11 year old girl for example so just do a google search and you may find other people's recommendations because word of mouth is really invaluable it's helpful to keep lists and i'll talk about lists and spreadsheets in a minute it, but if you hear of a book that's highly recommended or it's won literary prizes or uh, people are talking about just jot it down on a list and then next time you need to find something for your child to read you've got a bit of a resource to refer back to if your child enjoyed a particular author, look online and see if that author has written other books. And of course there's good old Google. There are loads of websites where they give you recommendations. If you enjoyed book X, you might enjoy book Y. Or just type it into a Google search. So you could type in, if you enjoyed Harry Potter, you might enjoy, and then hit enter, and there will be heaps of suggestions for you. Okay, moving on to the lists and spreadsheets that I mentioned. I keep different lists and spreadsheets for different members of my family. I keep my reading list and grants and knowers um, in a website called Tada List. It's no longer available, but there are other websites like it where you can make various online lists. So any book recommendations that I see or hear, anyone's raving about it on a blog or a YouTube video or a friend, I'll put it onto my list and then when I'm looking for books to read, I know which ones I wanted to try and I've got something to search for. I manage all of my family's reading material. So books that I've read that I know Grant will enjoy, I will put on his list. His list is much shorter than mine, but that's okay because he has less time to read and he's a much slower reader. But he's absolutely loved any of the books I've recommended to him. For Noah, I also have an ongoing list and I will list all of the books in a series. So for example, he was reading the Spooks Apprentice series and as he read them, I would check them off so I always knew which one was coming up next. For Daniel, I have a spreadsheet. When I first found out that he hates choosing books, I went into the library and I found a male librarian and I said, what are teenage boys reading? Like, what are good books? Or what are books that you enjoy that you could recommend? And he started me off. He gave me a whole list of books to try and series to try. So I went home and I made this spreadsheet and I put on there, you know, the title, the series, the book number, the author, and listed them all. And then as I request them from the library, which I'll talk about in a minute, I will make that particular item, like I'll colour the box amber, and then when I receive the book, once he's read it, um, if he liked it, I'll mark it green, and if he didn't, I'll mark it red. And keeping this spreadsheet serves two purposes. One, so I'm not re like requesting the same books for him that he's already read and told me he didn't enjoy, and two, so that when Noah reaches his age, I will know which kinds of books um, to request for him. Now he reads so fast and so often that he's constantly giving books back to me saying I enjoyed this or I didn't so I was losing track. So now when he's finished books he puts them on my desk face down if he didn't enjoy it and face up if he did enjoy it and then when I have a moment I go and enter it into the spreadsheet. Now I talked about requesting books. What I do is I log on to my library's website with my library card number and I just type in the title of the book I want and I request it and then once it it gets sent into my library from a different library if it's not available or even if it is available they'll pull it from the shelf for me I get an email saying there's a book waiting for you 
and I think you have about five days to go and pick up the book. So this is so convenient. I'm not browsing shelves and like what do I read, that takes a lot of time or like I said I have this huge list of book recommendations that I'm wading through so I can just type in what I want. It's especially handy if you're reading through a series and you want the next book. So as you're coming to the end of the first or the book that you're busy with you can go ahead and request the next one so that's ready to go straight on to. Now this is all very handy except when the library is closed. If I run out of reading material on like a Saturday night shock horror and I can only go to the library on Monday, oh, this is like, I have a fear of running out of reading material so this is awful for me. I use the Overdrive app and I will download an ebook. So I always have something to read and it's always handy. It's great to actually have your book along with you and it's just on your phone. You don't have to actually carry a book. So that's really convenient but the most convenient for me is being able to check a book out of the library outside of library hours. Maybe I should have mentioned that everything I'm discussing in this video I have as a six part series of blog posts and I will link them all down below. And if you go ahead and read those um, on one of them there is actually a list of books that my boys have enjoyed for their ages. So if you're looking for recommendations for your sons you can go ahead and check that out. Okay, now I mentioned earlier that maybe your child just doesn't enjoy reading and that Noah was like that. And now I'm going to talk about that. Now, when you're learning any new skill, no matter what it is, there's four stages. First, it's impossible and you just don't know how to do it. Second, you learn how to do it, but it's difficult because it's a new skill and it's something new you haven't tried. Third stage is, then it becomes easy. And then the fourth stage is, then it becomes enjoyable. Or well, this is applicable to reading anyway. I believe that only once reading starts to become easy does it become enjoyable because then you're not concentrating on how to read and you're able to be immersed in the story. And when we explained this to Noah, he just hated reading. He didn't want to do his reading homework. It was a big fuss every time and we explained to him the only way to enjoy reading is to push through all of those stages. It's a means to an end and then you will never ever have to go through that again. But once you push through to this, the part where it becomes easy, then you can start enjoying it and then that's it. You can be a reader for life. So persistence and practice is the key here. If they just don't enjoy reading, persist with it, have them practice and give them loads of different types of things to read and hopefully they will push through to the stage where they can start to enjoy it. In fact, I asked Daniel and Noah independently, what advice would they give to anybody who's not enjoying reading? And Daniel said, Read at least one chapter every day. You might find you get into the story and want to keep reading. And Noah said, just do it every day, even if you hate it. You might grow to love it like I do. Now it's the best thing in the world. So there you go. That's advice from two boys who love reading. Didn't necessarily start out that way. Just keep going. Persistence and practice is the key. Now I've heard a lot of people say they just don't have time to read but it's the same as anything. If it's important, you will make time for it. And I really believe that it's important to schedule time in for reading. Now, Noah likes to read for at least an hour at bedtime. So we take that into account and make sure he goes to bed early enough to fit in that amount of reading so that he's not going to sleep too late. Daniel pretty much self-manages his reading, but we do find that we have to limit his screen time because anytime there's a choice between screens and reading, he's going to choose screens. So by limiting his screen time, it creates a vacuum that he will then fill with reading. Try to help the process along rather than just saying to your kid, you just have to read every day. Now, when Noah was struggling and didn't want to read, I would start out by reading to him, which would get him absorbed in the story and then say okay now it's your turn to read and he was happy to continue reading then because he'd already got sucked into the story whereas if I just handed him the book and said you need to read it would just seem like hard work so that was something that was helpful but I want to mention here please be very careful about rewards for reading and there's this research supporting this why that's not a good idea and I'll link that below please go and have a read for that why it's not good to to place rewards for reading the exception to this is rewards that actually support the reading habit. So a new bookmark or a new audiobook or buying them a magazine or something that supports the habit of reading, those would be appropriate rewards. Perhaps your child wants to see a particular movie but there's a book involved, for example The Hunger Games, you could require that they read The Hunger Games book first before going and seeing the movie, or whichever book it is, before going and seeing the movie. That could be the reward, but that supports the reading habit. It's not just an independent reward. 
I hope some of these tips have been helpful. Like I said, I'm passionate about this, so if you want to have a chat in the comments or ask me any questions, I'll answer them as soon as I can. I will link below the, the links that I've mentioned in the video and the six-part blog series covering all of the things I've talked about, maybe a bit more articulately. So you can go and have a read of that and refer back to them and maybe pin it if you want to. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.